Hi everyone, my name is Bobby Tishy and I'm a solution lead here at Stitch. And today we're gonna to walk through how to build a welcome series within Canvas and Braze. And to start, there's multiple ways to build welcome series within Braze, but certainly the most effective and efficient way of doing that would be within Canvas. Um, so here, starting on the homepage of Braze, I'm gonna click over on the left menu bar and click Canvas. And from here is where all of our different Canvas journeys and orchestration will live um, right now. Uh, we don't have any in here we've cleaned it up for this demo so i'm going to go ahead and click create canvas on the upper right hand side and this is going to open up the canvas builder um so from here i'm going to put in a stitch welcome series and for those of you from, who are familiar with braze um, you'll see a couple of familiar features here but for those who aren't there's a couple of options that are really neat for building out canvases and for governing who has access to them so number one is add team so from here you can see there's a number of different teams that we've built out within our instance of brace um, a couple of them are testing some are marketing related and what this allows us to do is tie specific users to their team so for example if we have a qa and testing team we can attach all the users who are part of that team to that team and brace and that way they have access to all the things that they would need to test or go through qa same thing with the marketing team who may be responsible for content or campaigns uh, and so on. So really allows us to determine who has access to which um, Canvas journeys and who doesn't. The next pieces are on, all on tags and this helps us for uh, reporting and analytics. Um, so in this situation, we just have one um, dev here. We're not gonna select any in this situation, but we could do things like promotional, um, transactional, operational, um, any type of tag you want to give this canvas, you can add in here. The other piece that is really important when we're sending, setting up any canvas is the conversion event. So this, this has a couple of things. One helps us in reporting so we can track ROI for this particular journey, um, but also allows us to leverage the same conversion event for exit criteria. So if someone does achieve this particular conversion, we can determine when they leave that, um, that journey. So that way they don't be, or not continue to be messaged to uh, based on after they've actually filled out what they would want them to accomplish. So in this situation, so this is a welcome series. Ideally, in this situation, we're trying to either get people back to an application or back to the website um, to continue down the path that they're going down. So for example, if we were a product company and we wanted someone to visit a particular page, like a documentation page to learn more, or if we're an e-commerce brand that wants um, someone to make a, a follow-up purchase or make their first purchase, we can decide what that looks like here. So the first thing is uh, there's four different types of conversion events. One is start session. So that could be either on the web or through your iOS or Android app. Next is make a purchase. Um, and that would be uh, tracked through the Braze SDK, either on the web or mobile. We can also have performs a custom event. So this populates every custom event that we have within our Braze instance. Um, so if, if we want to have um, a specific event tracked um, based off of that, we could pick that one. And then the other portion would be an upgrade um, for that particular app, again, using the Braze SDK to track it. In this situation, we're going to um, view this as start session. So that way, anytime someone goes from the email and then jumps onto the website or the mobile app and starts a session there, we're taking that as a conversion. They've done what we wanted them to do as part of that onboarding. At the very bottom, we can set a conversion deadline. So from the time that someone enters into this journey, how long could it be, um, or how long do we want it to be until we take the conversion and apply it back to this particular journey? In this situation, our welcome series is gonna be seven days. So I'm gonna update that to be seven days, but we can add um, any hours, minutes, or day iteration that we'd want to. Uh, the next thing on the next screen is the entry schedule. So how and when are people, or it's actually just when people are falling into this particular journey. So there are three types here, scheduled. So this would be at a particular time. So every day at 4 p.m. Another one would be action-based. So this is when something particular happens. And this is the one that we're gonna use for this instance, um, where we have an, a new email address for this person. So we're gonna put them down a welcome series once they've added an email address and we've been able to capture it. So that could be through a pop-up on the website. That could be, um, they've downloaded the mobile app and created an account, whatever it might be. Um, that's what we're going to leverage here. The last type of entry event for a canvas is the API triggered. So a user can enter via an API request that's made from the mobile app or from your website. The next portion down here is the entry window. So we can determine when people enter into this canvas. So the, um, the option here is, is we can set basically some quiet times if we wanted to. 
but we can also add an endpoint to this journey. So if it's an onboarding series or a welcome series that is for a particular time frame or a canvas that's for a particular time frame, we can end it. Um, this would be very relevant for things like events or maybe special promotions or sales um, that you might be pushing. In this area, we're not going to have any end date for our welcome series. So we'll go ahead and click next. Next is going to be the target audience. Um, so first, what we're able to do is add in any segment that we've built within Braze previously. Um, so I'll scroll down here and you can see every segment that we've got within our Stitch Braze workspace. Um, from here, I'm going to go ahead and click the onboarding segment um, that we previously created. And then from there, I can add in additional filters. So again, just for a recap, we're anybody who performs the action of adding an email address. Anytime someone is added to Braze and there's an email address tied to it, they're going to be pushed in here in addition to what criteria they meet on the onboarding piece of it. So really what we're identifying here is anyone who has not purchased from us before, um, as well as being uh, having added their email address for the first time. What's nice here is I can do a lookup user, so I can just do a, a couple of quick tests to make sure that people who I expect to fall into this canvas are actually doing that. Um, I can also add in additional filters up here based on any custom attributes or custom events that I have in Braze, as well as all of the Braze out of the box functionality. So first use the app, um, intelligent channel. So we're using channel optimizer. Um, when they last made a purchase, when they last used the app, how much money they spent with us, all these different things um, that come out of the box with Brace, as well as any retargeting elements here. And then we've got entry controls, so I can allow people to re-enter this canvas. I'm not going to do that since this is a welcome series. And I can also limit the number of people who will potentially enter this canvas. So I'm not going to do that in this scenario, but this is very helpful for things like sweepstakes, um, where we only want to have a thousand people enter into a particular sweepstakes um, to try to um, drive urgency for a particular canvas. Um, next is the exit criteria. So for this one, um, we're going to have a, a couple of things here. One, we're going to have to start a session um, or they make a purchase. So um, those are going to be the two, two main elements that we have here of this, of what we determine the success or exit criteria. If you'll remember on that first step, that's what we wanted to do on the, um, or that's what we determined the start session would be the conversion. So make purchase again, we're, we're deciding what will automatically exit these people from that canvas at any time. Next, you'll see it that down here, the target population, we've got one reachable user currently. Um, but then obviously with this being an action-based canvas, every single time someone falls into this bucket and Braze is doing all of those calculations and segmentation in real time. So as soon as someone adds an email address and that's communicated to Braze, they'll flow through into this canvas. The fourth step of the canvas setup is around send settings. Um, so we want to send to every user who has subscribed or opted in. In this scenario, the other options here are opted in users only or all users, including unsubscribed users. Obviously, including unsubscribed would only relate to anything that would be transactional or operational in nature. So maybe it's an update to a privacy policy or a terms of service, but we wouldn't want to use that unless it was in that kind of vein of making sure it's transactional or operational. Uh, we can then limit the rate at which all these messages go out. Um, so this is really helpful for if we have a canvas that is particular or specific to a customer service event. So if we want to make sure that the throttling is happening for customer service, uh, we can bring this down to a certain amount. In this scenario, since it's an onboarding series, we don't need to worry about that here. The other great thing about this is it also honors frequency capping. If you didn't know, one of the best features about Braze is that it has out-of-the-box frequency capping, which is one of the few platforms um, in the MarTech ecosystem that has this. We don't have any set up currently, but if we wanted to make sure to only cap one or two messages per day uh, for these particular folks, we could do that. And then last for those enable quiet hours. In this scenario, we don't want anything going out from midnight to 8 a.m. We'll have that go out once it kicks back up at 8 a.m. And we'll just have it send at the next available time based off of that. The next piece is the actual Canvas orchestration. Um, so from here, we can go ahead and build out what we want the welcome series to look like. So the first thing that we're going to do after we've, because we've already added all these different um, entry rules based on the workflow that we just walked through. Um, so here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter in a variant. And really what variants are is that can, you can think of these as swim lanes. We can have multiple variants that do different things. We can also have different audience paths, um, different experiment paths. So you can see on the left-hand side for all the different components of a canvas. So in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and create um, the first variant. Uh, and then the first thing that's going to happen is a message is going to be sent as soon as someone's email address is added. So as soon as they fill out a particular form or they create an account, whatever that might be, we're going to send them that message. And then from here, when I click on the message, I can actually determine what I want this to be. In this scenario, we're just going to focus on email for this example. 
and we'll just use one of these out of the box templates for the, the purposes of this video. Um, we'll click on the, the fall journey. We're not going to go into the actual editor today, um, but you could go in here and make any edits that you would like to, as well as uh, make any edits to the sending info. So from there, I'm going to click done. We've got our first email all set up. And then from there, I'm going to put in a delay of a day, and then we'll have another message come after that. So we'll build a three email welcome series. Put another delay for another day, and then one last message. So we've got our first variant, our first path, where people will receive three messages after a delay of one day in each one. And then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, what's really nice about this feature is we can clone this variant. So then we can decide how we want people to go on these different variants. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 50-50 split. 50% 50 of the people falling into this journey are gonna receive variant one and the other 50% are going to receive variant two. And we're going to go ahead and rename this to um, two days between messages. And then we'll rename variant one to be one day between messages. So from here, all I've got to do is come in um, and make the adjustments to after one day. So we're just going to update this to two days. for each of these delay steps. And the other thing to, to point out here too, is we can um, add in here a couple of different options for, for delay. We can do after duration. So this would be you know, seconds, minutes, hours, calendar days, or weeks until a specific time. We can also do a specific day. If we have, for example, an upcoming event that we're driving towards, so let's say we want everyone to come into the journey as they should based on an action that they perform, but we don't want to send out an email um, until it's a week before that particular event. This is really relevant for obviously things like concerts, even things like air, airlines. So when someone has a particular flight as well as sporting events. So all these different things um, that we could do it until a specific day. We could also do it until a specific day of the week based on how we want to build that out. So from here, we've got our, our welcome series with two different variants. And then what we're going to do is uh, go ahead and launch it. Before we do that, a couple of things I want to call out over on these components that we didn't talk through. So we talked about the message component um, a little bit. We focused on email, but in this scenario, um, that could be anything from a content card, a net message, a push message um, across uh, iOS or web, um, as well as a webhook. So if we want something to be communicated out to another platform or another service as part of this journey we could do that there the other piece around these delivery settings we can use intelligent timing which is what's the most popular time for the users amongst that app across all users or we could do a specific fallback time as well so we'll go ahead and delete that just to remove that step the other steps here we went through the delay and this is again timing for when the next message or next activity should happen decision split um, which allows us to take whether it's an action or a particular data value, like an attribute or an event, um, to put people down different paths. Um, we can also put in audience paths based on predetermined audiences that we already built. Action paths based on specific actions people have taken on the mobile app or on the web or that are custom. Next are experiment paths, which is very much like A-B testing, um, but can be A, B, C, D, E, basically A, B, N testing based off of that. The last three ones I want to call out here are user update, Facebook audience, and Google audience. So these are audience updates, so I can make an adjustment to a user's profile and their attributes or events based on what happens in the journey. I can also add folks to a Facebook audience or a Google audience um, from this canvas as well. The last thing is just uh, the cleanup canvas. So if you do have a number of different activities here or you want to just clean it up prior to launching it, you can do that but just by clicking that cleanup canvas on the bottom left. And um, also what's nice here is this detailed view. I can also go to simplified view where it breaks it down a little bit easier, especially as you start to build out steps and you get into having dozens and dozens of steps. This is really, really valuable to have as you're looking through these different journeys. Last thing is always make sure you save it before you launch it, um, just to make sure you've got that as a template um, or as a saved draft of a canvas um, moving forward. 
and that will then save itself and then you'll be able to launch it from there. I hope that was helpful on how to build welcome series within a canvas and phrase. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Stitch at any time. Thank you.